Head into the papers now, see what the headlines are. And I have with me in the studio to do justice to this, uh, Obani Akinwale. He's uh, one of our in-house analysts and uh, we'll be doing this together. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. Good morning, Mike. Thank you very much. And we expect uh, uh, Dr. Dan Kerry to join us as we get along. Now, let's start with the Daily Trust. Daily Trust newspaper, this is where we start from this morning. Uh, Daily Trust says uh, xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Nigeria recalls envoy pulls out of economic summit. Mm. Uh, so much uh, reaction and fallout from this uh, the last uh, uh, few uh, d days now. Uh, that's what you see on the front of the Daily Trust. The Daily Times is the next one. Daily Times says, uh, he's dwelling on xenophobic attacks. It says federal government uh, recalls envoy to South Africa, boycotts the, the, the World Economic Forum taking place there, issues travel warning to Nigerians on risk areas, Police avert looting of ShopRite, MTN by irate youths, and Amnesty International blame South African government. Okay. From there, let's go to the blueprint. Now, now the blueprint is still also dwelling on xenophobia. It says Nigeria, other African nations boycott the World Economic Forum. Don't travel to high-risk areas. Federal government advised Nigerian, Nigerians and recalls envoy. And uh, NANS seeks uh, emergency AU summit. And attacks killing despicable, uh, at, uh, attacks and killings uh, despicable, that's the NLC, the Nigerian Labour Congress saying this. Now from there let's go to the Nation newspaper. The Nation this morning says Nigeria draws red line with South Africa over killings. And uh, 125 protesters held nationwide, one shot as police repel an attack on ShopRite in Abuja, MTN, others shot officers. You find all that on the front page of uh, the nation newspaper now from the nation let's go to the vanguard now uh, vanguard let's do this lastly before we start talking about it uh, vanguard is still talking about the attacks we are drawing red line against south africa that's the federal government is saying this envoy to south africa recalled uh, mtn shuts offices nationwide as shares drop and boycotts uh, world economic forum in cape town asks nigerians to avoid going to south africa an outrage protests continue in Nigeria as police foil attacks on MTN, ShopRite offices, others. And Nance gives South African firm 24 hours to shut down, five days to leave Nigeria. Airpeace offers to evacuate Nigerians from South Africa. Federal government uh, is uh, announcing this. And uh, sue South African government. Falana urges uh, federal government. Okay. Uh, this are all fallouts from uh, the xenophobia that has been on the front burner. Now, uh, Ni, I, I know you've been following this development. Mm -hmm. When the uh, federal government decided, okay, one, we're calling, we're recalling the, the Nigerian High Commissioner to South Africa, and we're boycotting the World Economic Forum, and sending uh, a plane to pick Nigerians from Friday if they wish to come home and all of that, and then ad um, sending an, a travel advisory. Uh, from comments on Twitter so far, it seemed like uh, Nigerians are so proud. Ah. Uh. I'm say, I would say I'm not impressed. Okay. Uh, Why not? And because if you look at the particular headline, say we are drawing. Mm. Uh, in Sena Klein, I think it's supposed to be we have drawn, not okay. drawing. But, but wouldn't that just be headline? It, just, it, just it, headline. It's not because, about the headline. Because, because the, the action has been taken. The Nigerian the, Crime Commission the, has been recalled, has been act, which is an, which no, is an no, action. The, the press release by the mm. Foreign Affairs Minister yesterday was they are going to consider that. Mm. They haven't considered that, but it's, it's on the table. But in Sena Klein, Sincerely yours, what I expect from the Nigerian government is more than what they are doing. And it's as if they are expecting the populace to push them before they could act. Uh, what stops us from saying, if this doesn't stop, we are nationalizing South African assets in Nigeria? What stops us from Wouldn't saying... Wouldn't that be too drastic? It is because, not, because the it is not the drastic. Is. It is not drastic. Let me give you an example. Just a, music, a music artist in the United States was in Sweden, and they have a bro in Sweden and was arrested in Sweden. Mm. The president of the United States intervened, yeah. just a citizen of the United States. Now, what it means is that if you are killing, you are maiming, you are vandalizing Nigerian property, it's top of nothing to say, whatever Basa agreement with South Africa and South African Airways, we don't want you here. Nigeria ambassador, come back home. South African envoy in Nigeria, go back to your base. So it, it will send a clear signal. Look at what the president of South Africa is saying. They are less concerned about what is happening to Nigerians. Because this thing is uh, recurring, and they, they understand that we have a system whereby Nigerian life does not value. And you look at Nigeria is boycotting. You have the chairman group CEO of Zene Bank at WEF yesterday. You have the senior of the seniors that says Nigerian lives are not valuable. Obezekwe Zili at the WEF. 
is Nigeria actually boycotting? So who are the big boys when it comes to the, the industry in Nigeria? Are they one of the big boys? Are they one of the administrators that we have there? So in, in, in reality, I'm not too impressed with what the government is doing. And uh, self-help, I'm totally against it. Because what we are doing practically is that burning a pep, shop, a pep store, burning a shop, price, what have you, is you are burning Nigeria investment, rendering Nigeria jobless, taking Nigeria back home, making our insurance to suffer for it. Mm. Now, the, the point there is we, we haven't seen actions like this in, in the recent past from any of our governments we do. in the country. We do. When it comes to, okay? We do. Remember in 2012 when Nigerians, about 120 of them were sent back from South Africa mm. in the case of Yellow FIFA. Uh, as uh, Drum, they will say Jonathan was, Jonathan sent back 56 businessmen. And he said there is, a, there is an issue of HIV, HIV in South Africa, and as such, Nigeria will not want them to spread the virus. We immediately are doing that. They reverse the decision. And that is Jonathan that we said is dumb. So if a dumb Jonathan can return 56 businessmen back to South Africa, I think a general incapacity of President Muhammadu Buhari should be able to send a stronger warning sign. All right. To South now, Africa. The, all of this, no doubt, is going to put pressure on, on the South African government to act. They are not. Well, but it is meant to put pressure on the government. Mm -hmm. But we cannot say it doesn't anyway, because the issue there is, it's not only Nigeria that is pulling out of the WEF, uh, of, uh, WEF. The, the, of the WEF uh, mm -hmm. conference holding in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. Malawi has pulled out. Uh, Rwanda has pulled out. DR Congo has pulled out. We don't know how many other countries might want to follow suit. Mm -hmm. But the point there is, what impact will all of this have on the on what we want to see South African government do about uh, the xenophobia in the country? It's simple. Uh, you remember when we had this case of MTN and what have you, mm. and federal government, the South African government immediately intervened. Mm. Now, just imagine that the Nigerian government decided to shut down multi-choice of this world, shut down MTN of this world, shut down IBTC of this world, shut down every investment and said, we want you to take decisive action. Sincerely yours, you will see that they will stop this uh, uh, needless killing immediately. Yeah, but in a situation where, anyway, we, ha we don't have all the time, but in a situation where we, we the ones who are, those who are involved in the uh, xenophobia, actually what they call criminals and all of that, uh, I, I wonder how much government can do in that regard. Yeah. But, but the point there is, a lot of people have said, government, it is good you're taking this stance now, and it goes a long way. We want you to even do more, like you, <laughs> you are one of the Nigerians saying exactly. that right now. Exactly. Thank you very much, Abani Akinwale, for coming on the Pleasure. program. Thank Pleasure. you. The newspapers this morning, Thursday, and uh, we're going and I have with me in the studio a lecturer from the University of Lagos, Dr. Dan Ikiri, and our in-house analyst, Obani Akinwale. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this day. Um, Soba... Um, you know, headlines that we see on major um, newspapers this morning, and that's what we're going to, going to be discussing uh, while we go through the headlines. But first, let's look at um, what uh, the newspapers have for us. At this time, we're starting with the Vanguard. Vanguard is leading with attacks, withdrawing red line against South Africa, says the federal government. Uh, as riders, he has envoy to SA record MTN shots offices nationwide as shares drop. Boycotts World Economic Forum in Cape Town ask Nigerians to avoid going to South Africa. Outrage protests continue in Nigeria as police foil attacks on MTN ShopRight offices, others. Now, NANs give South African firms 24 hours to shut down five days to leave Nigeria. FG's offers to evacuate Nigerians from South Africa. FG also sue, says FG, uh, um, FG sue South African government. Uh, Falano is urging the federal government to say that to the federal government. Now on the nation newspaper, we have um, uh, still talking about the xenophobic attacks. Nigeria draws red line with South Africa over killings. 125 protesters held, uh, protesters held nationwide and one shot as a police repel attack on MTN office in a uh, shop right office in Abuja. Now on the Daily Times, we have xenophobic attacks. Federal government uh, recalls envoy to South Africa, boycotts WEF, that's the World Economic Forum. And as riders, it has uh, issues a travel warning to Nigerians on risk areas. Now looking at the blueprint also, xenophobia, Nigeria, other African nations boycott the WEF and on the news direct 
Also, Nigeria recalls High Commissioner to South Africa pulls out of WEF. And on the Daily Trust, xenophobic attacks in South Africa still leading the Daily Trust. Now, it has um, Nigeria recalls Envoy pulls out of Economic Summit, MTN ShopRite, others close down outlets. Gentlemen, just like what we saw ye in yesterday's papers, uh, we're seeing, um, of course, a development uh, that the Nigerian government has recalled its envoy, uh, you know, its ambassador to South Africa. Uh, would you say that the federal government is now taking decisive steps to ensure that we do not have uh, this attack or this issue at it that we have right now? Uh, uh, what I would say is that, like I said earlier, was uh, the government action were afterthoughts. And the headlines uh, rightly captured that they were planning to recall, if not recall. They said it's on the table. And I would still say it without missing what that. The actions by the government is driven by the effect of the citizen taking to social media, using a self-help, which is not the best. I'm mm -hmm. still more disappointed in this government, Nigerian police. Uh, you heard what happened in South Africa. A cab driver was killed by supposedly a migrant. In Nigeria, a Nigerian was killed at uh, Lekki by a police officer. Uh, you find out that if South African government cannot protect us, our government should be able to protect us. I'm still saying it. The BASA agreement, that's bilateral agreement between Nigeria and South Africa, should be revisited. Let's stop South African ways from getting to Nigeria. Let federal government shut down multi choice, shut down MTN, shut down ShopRite. I'm 100% I'm sure the government of South Africa will sign an agreement to ensure that life of every Nigerian is safe over there because if you look at the crop of investment they have in Nigeria, talk IBTC standard, which is the highest pension for company in Nigeria, if they have, so, so if our life is not important and you want our money, the government has not done anything in my own view. But if you say that, um, Dan, if, you, if you're saying that um, the government should, um, you know, shut down, revisit the BASA, mm -hmm. uh, the agreement that Nigeria has with South Africa, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of Nigerians that are in South Africa, when you listen to them talk, they don't want to come to Nigeria. Yeah, they that, don't want that, to come back. No, the, you see, <laughs> the issue of don't want to come back is because of what is prevailing here. At the time you address those issues that actually drove some of them out, a lot it's of them are willing time to come. Because we you know, know it's, but again, we must not look at whether they are going to come back or not. At least when they are attacked, we, we feel the brunt. Mm -hmm. So they don't say because they don't want to come back, so we should leave them. No, the issue now is that, like you rightly said, we have seen all manner of attacks on Nigerians. We have never seen a South African policeman kill a South African over that issue. To even tell you how we look at life ourselves. But here is our police that are killing our people for reacting to, you know, a callous, you know, uh, attitude of some people towards our own citizens. I am thinking, like you rightly said, the government need to wake up. There should be a deliberate policy, not based on reactions from, you know, citizenry who will protest before you know that life is, is salient, life is sacred. The moment this thing is done, that we see life as something that we cannot create and treat it the way it should be, I'm telling you that there will be a turnaround. Now, these are people you, you might look at it from the point of view of, okay, we have more people in South Africa that perhaps they have in Nigeria, all right? But how much of our businesses are there? Mm -hmm. Is that, now, whose fault is that? Yeah. So that's the more reason you, you, you need to hold them by that particular source mm -hmm. of livelihood. At the time you stamp your, stamp your authority on their businesses, forget about all the, let them come back, if that's the only problem. There are other places in Africa they can mm -hmm. go to. Mm -hmm. If South Africa is not ready to receive it, I, I listen to a former minister talk about, you know, so many, so many nasty things which could provoke this kind of attack. I, 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 you never can tell if they actually, do it, it was actually one of the things that spurred this action, mm -hmm. all right? Now, the Nigerians who are there, are they employed by the South African government? They create their own businesses. They are not working with uh, South African ministries and the rest of it. Mm -hmm. They are creating business, if we're employing their people. But we've heard stories about those businesses mm -hmm. that um, you've heard stories uh, about those businesses that should be questioned mm -hmm. also. Uh, there are businesses. some businesses that are questionable, not, not all. But, but, but looking at the places some. where um, even we've MTN, had, even MTN, at the MTN, where we, yeah, is MTN operation questionable? Yeah, not questionable? Yeah, questionable operations. So wh what I would say is this, let's uh, put the vision in perspective. What happened between Huawei and United States government? What is happening between the information war between United States and China? China. Now, the United States, they, this is what I'm going to do. 
Are you saying there are no Americans in China? Are they going to move back? Is the sanction not in place in the US? Is America not coming to the table to negotiate with US now? So the question now is that if the way you call, the way you call your, yourself is where that's going to call you, if our government is so serious about it, if Nigerians have, you remember a couple of times in Ghana, they were, beating, they were chasing Nigerians away, beating them. Their policy whereby you can't own a business in Nigeria and Ghana that you have to have a Ghanaian as part of your trustee. So what you find out now is that most countries in Africa are taking us for a ride. Giant of Africa, for what? So Nigerian government needs to wake up. If Nigerians are in South Africa, what is the population? What is our investment? What is the of Africa in Nigeria? And if you look at it, who is going to lose most? You and I know that the advert you see every day is that come to Cape Town. Hardly will you see on the national TV says, come to, come to Oshun, come to Ogun. People are going there for all the oral view. So if our government is serious and life of Nigerians are so, so important, government needs to take drastic measures, not reactionary measures. Mm -hmm. This thing happened uh, on Sunday, as at Monday or Tuesday, the federal government is saying they will send delegation to, and again, you still find some of our big boys, our big girls at World Economic Forum. The chairman of the Chinese Bank Group, the chairman, the obvious, uh, when the BBG thing was on, basically was saying, world does not have value for life. He was traveling around there. The same equation is in South Africa now sitting, and nobody is talking. And you said we have value for life. It's obvious that our rulers, our leaders are given more to talking than acting. And with what is happening in South Africa now, it's obvious that the, va the value of life of a Nigerian is more lower than the value of share of interest of other African nationals in Nigeria. And so the government begins to see our life as very, very important. Mm. South Africa is just a tip of iceberg. We're going to get yeah. it from Togo and Benin. Then let's look at um, the value of humanity that has um, degraded in uh, recent times. Uh, looking at, of course, what we've seen on the social media, the videos that have has gone viral um, concerning the attacks in uh, South Africa, and what we saw here in Nigeria, in Lagos specifically, uh, people going to this malls, some you know turning it into a looting um, avenue for them. Uh, let's look at the value of humanity. How much has this uh, degraded in recent time and what could be the cause? Thank you. Uh, in the first instance, I want to say that uh, I, I, I want to appreciate those Africans and Nigerians who, who decided to shun you know, uh, various performances and conferences in South Africa as a result mm, of this. Like Tiwa the Savage. Of Tiwa and Savage and the rest. You know, that, that makes a lot of statement. You know, now, on the issue of the value of life, clearly no human, no facility can create a human being. Mm -hmm. All right? We already know that. Now, every government is put in place to protect lives and properties. First, to protect lives. And it is that life that actually determines properties. So you need to protect that life and secure the properties of the life. Now, if a government is unable to do that, no matter how you want to describe it, no matter how many billions of dollars that are available to you, the government is a failure. We have seen over time that here in Nigeria, there seems not to be that recognition that life is sacrosanct, life oh. is salient. That is why Boko Haram has been doing all they are doing much is not then you have banditry and all these things are happening kidnapping and the rest in the course of which mm -hmm. lives are taken now south africa again all right and we are still talking about planning holding meeting to do this to do that mm -hmm. because they've known over time that we don't have what it takes to so i'm thinking that we need to begin to overemphasize mm -hmm. The importance, the importance of, of humanity. life. The importance of human life. Because it mm. is that human life that drives every other thing in human life. In fact, as a matter of fact, then society is about human life. Mm. So until we address that issue, we will not get it right. All right. Mm. Danny Kerry, uh, lecturer from the University of Lagos, thank you so much for your time. And Obani Akinwali, thank you for your thoughts thank on you. this. Hopefully, uh, we'll get to see the Nigerian government take decisive steps to ensure that this does not happen to Nigeria or Nigerians. I thank you, gentlemen, for your thing. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Now, you're watching TVC Breakfast, and we're streaming live on YouTube. You can connect with us on Twitter using the hashtag TVC Breakfast. Still to come. Let's uh, get into the papers now, see what the headlines are. But certainly, it's so clear and obvious today that uh, 
uh, xenophobic attacks and all the xenophobia in South Africa seem to have dominated all the papers or most of the papers in Nigeria this morning. And I have with me in the studio lecturer from the University of Lagos, Dr. Dane Kerry, here with me, as well as our in-house analyst, uh, Obani Akinwale. It's nice to have you both join me this morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Let's uh, start with the Vanguard newspaper. Vanguard is where we start from. Attacks, uh, we are drawing a red line against South Africa. Federal government is saying this. An envoy to South Africa recalled MTN shots offices nationwide as shares drop. Boycotts World Economic Forum in Cape Town and asks Nigerians to avoid going to South Africa. Outrage, protests continue in Nigeria as police foil attacks on MTN shop right offices, others. And Nance gives South African firms 24 hours to shut down, give days to live, or five days to live Nigeria. Airpeace offers to evacuate Nigerians from South Africa as the federal government is revealing this. And uh, sue federal government, oh sorry, sue South African government, Falana urges <laughs> the federal government. Okay, that's what you see on the vanguard. The nation is where we go next. Now, the nation says Nigeria draws a red line with South Africa over killings. And uh, 125 protesters held nationwide. One shot as police re re repel attack on ShopRite in Abuja. And MT and others shot offices. Okay, that's what you see on the nation newspaper. Daily Times is where we go next. And it's talking about uh, xenophobic attacks. Federal government recalls envoy to South Africa boycotts the World Economic Forum. And uh, you have some other uh, writers there. Issues, travel, uh, travel warning to Nigerians on risk areas. Uh, police averts looting of shop right empty and by Irish youths. And Amnesty International blames South African government. Okay. Uh, that's what you see on the Daily Times. Blueprint is where we go next now and still dwelling on the xenophobic attacks and on xenophobia. Nigeria, other African nations boycott uh, the World Economic Forum. Don't travel to high-risk areas. Federal government uh, advises Nigerians and recalls envoy. And uh, we have Nans seek emergency AU summit and attacks, killings, despicable. NLC saying this. News Direct is where we go now. Uh, Nigeria recalls High Commissioner to South Africa, uh, pulls out of the World Economic Forum and issues advisory against travel to high-risk areas and volatile places. And as MTN Nigeria closes shops nationwide, I am committed to quelling attacks on foreigners. President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa is quoted as saying that. And uh, Daily Trust is where we go now. Uh, the last paper now is xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Nigeria recalls envoy pulls out of economic uh, summit and MTN shop right. Others close down outlets in parts of the country. Gentlemen, uh, the, we, we just spoke with uh, Dr. Ogunubi from South Africa now who just told us that um, there's xenophobia that uh, everyone is responding or reacting to right now is, is found only within one a province and that is in Houting and in Houting uh, is also <laughs> limited to about a few provinces like Twani and Johannesburg but he said that beyond the one you see on the street where you see videos and all of that there are other forms of xenophobia like the occupational or professional xenophobia <laughs> the way he qualified it uh, Dr. Kerry I wonder what you make of this thank you uh, the most important thing is that lies are involved mm. Other people's sweat is being denied them. The, the product of their sweat is denied them. So whether it is in one community, whether it is in one village, whether it is in one province, at least it, it, it's about life. And uh, I am thinking that uh, the government has not really seen it as an issue. The mm -hmm. government of South Africa yeah. has never prioritized the lives of, you know, uh, foreign immigrants. nationals yes. or Africans. So, mm -hmm. And perhaps equally the, the fate to realize the importance of this brotherly spirit that Africans have, which was part of the reason why these same people that they are now fighting fought tooth and nail, did everything to ensure that they were liberated. Mm. You know, if, if these people who are now fighting for the nation, where were they when uh, the red likes of Bill, Peter Butter and the rest of mm. them were holding them down? Where were they? So we must recognize that for every society, you need a mix. Uh, uh, a, a mixture of the immigrants and the natives mm. to build your economy. It, it, nobody is self-sufficient. So I am thinking that uh, the South African government need to really wake up and see the need 
to you know to emphasize mm. the importance of these immigrants okay. to their economy and to the survival of the even, even the entire Africa continent. All right, Obani, let me come to you on this. Uh, the South African government and even the president has been highly criticized for not taking decisive action on this issue. Not not just now, the the previous ones and and the build up or the recurrence of all of this issue. If, if you have to advise in that regard, what would you have? What would you like to see the government of South Africa do? Pr practically to put an end to this or prevent xenophobia? <clears throat> I think one of the things of the undoings of most African leaders is that sometimes we attach color, uh, we attach uh, tribe to crime. And the reason why the blacks, uh, the black South Africans were clamoring to rule the country, why the whites were holding sway, and now we have the blacks. Now the fear of ANC losing the center has always been playing out. And again, don't forget that most of the so-called leaders in the, the president, so to say, in South Africa are core businessmen. So what you find out is that either you talk about Jacob Zuma, mm. Ram, uh, Ramaphosa, or what have you, they have their investment in South Africa and some of the outside Africa. So most time, personal interest is overriding what's supposed to be the critical issue. And earlier you mentioned that uh, the issue was mentioned to happen uh, only in the province. Mm. Again, let's put it in perspective. When we have Boko around Rapid in Nigeria, when U.S. was issuing warning, they were not saying don't come to Lagos. Mm. They were saying Nigeria don't go. The issue of banditry was, was promoted as if every area in Nigeria is where you have. And meanwhile, you look at Kaduna, Abuja, Casino Axis, where you have the Castro Rosalind and what have you. So either it's happening even in a, just a county. Mm. It is important that it's happening in South Africa. And it's important that it's affecting African life. And again, like he mentioned earlier, the South African government, I think they are quick to forget the sacrifice these so-called African foreigners. Because what you find out is that Chinese are not foreigners in South Africa. It, uh, Americans are not foreigners in South Africa. Indians. Even the whites <laughs> are not foreigners in South Africa. But they are African brothers that lay their lives on the block, that put their money on the block, and now foreigners Remembering in the black Remembering that every Africa. single Nigerian uh, civil servant paid something to contribute exactly. to the dismantling exactly. of the Exactly. So, so you, you begin to ask yourself that, what, like I said, the president of South Africa, the far as to be laid on the card is that he has business interest and he doesn't want to hurt their own personal private business interest, either at home or at abroad. Mm. But it is interesting now that every other African leader are now rising up to the challenge that, no, you slap me first, I look away. You slap me again, I'm going to give you back. And that is what is important now. All right. I want if, to if we, uh, Dr. Kerry, if we look at the bigger picture, uh, a lot of people, Nigerians, have been calling on government to, to take decisive action like this, or even much more yeah. earlier before now. Mm. Government, Nigerian government has taken this action now. Mm. Do you see this as the first step forward towards Nigeria acting in decisive ways, even beyond South Africa, to other countries as, as well who either discriminate against Nigerians and, and so on? I, I think that uh, this spirit of uh, being the big brother has always, you know, <laughs> taken the center stage in, in Nigeria, such that when we go a peacekeeping mission, we sacrifice everything, we sacrifice money, With we no sacrifice extra life, interest. we don't have any interest. Mm. You don't find that happening in America. Whenever they have any such, you know, activity anywhere, you see the president move with the businessmen, mm -hmm. and they take over the entire place. Mm -hmm. That is not Nigeria for you. We have this, you know, the, this big brother spirit. We do that everywhere. And even when all these things are happening, Nigeria still has this feeling that they are our own. Let's see how we can have I, I think that is what has really held the government that, or that the government does not know what to do before now. One of those two things. But at the moment, at least good enough, the Nigerians are now reacting to the point that government is now seeing the need to do something. Now, they've not even done anything. They've, I don't know if they have finally recalled the envoy. I, I, they, 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 what I heard was that they are planning to and all of that. They've had meetings. We should, at a point, take that bold step, even as a big brother, to tell the small brother that look, you need to be very cautious of what you do. You know, in some cases, we should be proactive, not even waiting to react. Because we already know that this thing is happening, it's been happening. As we speak, we've had issues of South African businesses in Nigeria, you know, repatriative funds that were related to some issues and fines and the rest of it. Yet, we, we have not been drastic, you know, because that has been our spirit. But now that lies are involved, I think the time has come for Nigeria to tell South Africa, particularly the president, that is either you keep 
are men, are people in good condition, mm. alive, or we will do this. Right. And again, Nigeria has the capacity to even call African you know, uh, Union to, to respond to this issue because it's not only about Nigeria. So many other African countries are involved. All those countries that South Africa is now brutalizing, that the president and his police pretend not to know anything about, such that in the presence of policemen, you find South Africans looting, killing, and all that. Mm. They are watching, but Nigeria, when you move into shop right just to stop something, they are not shooting our people. We must address all these issues in a very holistic manner. That this thing will not repeat itself. All right, Obani, uh, we know that at, at, at the Japan summit or conference, mm -hmm. Uh, Nigerian president and South African president they met mm -hmm. and the South African president invited Nigerian president to be in South Africa mm -hmm. by October. sometime in October uh, with this development that do you would you advise you know, although we don't know how is the engagement and at, the, at that level is going to be but would you advise that Nigerian my, president still let go me ask you if I come to your house and I kill your goat and you invite me to come over you come to my house to kill my goat and you now ask me to come over to come and meet you will you come I said I'm coming to kill so your own So good. what you are doing? <laughs> exactly. No, yeah. we don't. We so, don't pray to kill any good. So, no, 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 no. The answer is obvious. <laughs> but the Nigerian if government, the Nigerian president, my, agreed to be there. If, don't forget that there was an insurance woman that was killed around now. June. Yes. So if you don't have respect for my nationals, their business are being born every three, three months, mm -hmm. and you're inviting me to come over to come and do what? To take their corpses. Exactly. So it is obvious. If Ramaphosa want anything from Nigeria, it should come down. Yeah, but the president ag agreed to be there. In, in, in he October. Can, he has agreed to be there. He was, uh, he, they agreed to be at WEF, mm. and they are not there. Mm. So it's obvious now that with what is happening, except, Most likely. Mm. except the life of Nigerians, as put by cartoonists, it's, it's not as important as a cow life. Mm. The president will go in October 20 to South Africa. Or is he going there for burial? Or to go and look at the shop that was burnt? No. I think the president or the handler of the president should ensure that All right. Nigeria government did not attend the October 20 meeting with the president of okay. the Mike, it must not end there. We must Ra equally make demand. They need to pay. You see? Yeah. You the government is talking about compensation. Yeah, for it's critical. Yeah. 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 So, so, so we wait. We, we must see. demand mm. compensation. All right. On this we, we, wait to see, we wait to see how that, plans, that pans out. And beyond that, too, some analysts are saying the South African president, Sir Ramaphosa, should come to Abuja let and see the Nigerian president. Must, and, really and, and maybe apologize to Nigerians and all of that. He it's must. okay. Let Thank you come. very much, Other Obani. Whatever he's looking for, we should give it to him. All right. Honestly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we shouldn't do that line yet. No, we should. <laughs> that is the only way you can get your speak. All right. Let, let, let's, let's leave it here. Yeah. Yeah. Let, 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 let's Otherwise leave it here. Continue. All right, let's leave it here, Dr. Danikere. Thank you so much for coming on the program. Obani Akinwale, thank you. Thank right. you. Uh, we hope that uh, all right. will change. Yeah, <laughs> things will change. We hope so.